Well, it's finally happening, OnShape is kicking me out, so I have to switch to Fusion 360. Let me explain. But let's actually do that upstairs where it's not as noisy, but hey, this is my first uh, project that I did completely in Fusion 360. Okay, so if you were following this channel for any amount of time, you'll know that I basically design everything I do, everything I share for 3D models. I designed that all in Onshape, and I really liked Onshape, and I, I still do. So Onshape is a web or browser-based CAD tool, so everything you model up gets stored to the cloud. It is available anywhere. You sign in from your laptop or your desktop or wherever. You have the same files. You don't need to install anything. It's, you know, it's a really nice tool. And the best thing was, it was free, asterisk, uh, small asterisk at the time. So they had, of course, paid plans. They need to make money somehow, but they also had a free plan that was basically available for everyone. And the only condition was you couldn't create documents or designs that were private. So if anyone had like your URL to the design, um, your link basically, they could view that design as well. They couldn't edit it, but they could look at it and clone it. And even though it, I don't think it was explicitly allowed, um, use it for their own stuff. So for me, that was always like, okay, that's fine. Like most of the designs that I created weren't that high value anyway, where I'd have to like protect them in any special way. Plus I, I was uploading most of the stuff I designed anyways for free. So that's not an issue. So what has changed? So when I logged into Onshape today, I saw this. And thank you to Dizingoff for already pointing this out to me on Twitter. And the first big thing here is that Onshape doesn't allow using the free plan for commercial work anymore. And for you, that might not matter as a maker, as someone who doesn't earn any money with the stuff you create, um, that's probably still okay. Uh, for me, this is my job. I don't necessarily design stuff in Onshape that I then sell. I don't have a physical product that I sell, but these videos, this is, this is my product basically. This is what I earn my living off of. So basically if I do a project and use those files or show you how I design that uh, in Onshape, if I use Onshape for that, uh, that is commercial use, so I can't do that anymore. And the other thing that I'm actually not sure if that has always been there or is now new as well, is that anything you create and that is not private, is not a private design, so basically everything you create in the free plan, all your designs are now automatically licensed out to anyone else using Onshape for modification, for viewing, for using commercially, for reproducing. So basically you're making your designs public domain. Anything you produce in Onshape is now free for anyone to do anything with basically. And don't get me wrong, I'm a huge advocate for sharing things and for making stuff public and making it available for others to use for their own purposes. But I think actually making stuff essentially public domain for anyone to do whatever they want with it might just be a step too far. Ah, uh, by the way, 3D printed pots right there, that's from the Prusa review and that's something else. I love them. There's another one up here that was done on the, where is it? There. That was done on the CR10. Look at this. This is this is huge. This is like a massive print. And here's where that's becoming a real problem. Uh, first of all, technically, I'm not even allowed to export my own designs from Onshape because I'm using it commercially. Technically, I'm showing you this process in this very video, which is commercial use. But yeah, I'm doing it anyways. Come sue me if you want some. The other problem I'm seeing is with something like the CNC, CNC, C this thing, is their official cam path, so the equivalent of your slicer profile and slicer, uh, is through Onshape, through a plugin called Kirimoto. So if you want to use any of those plugins, commercially, you do have to use a paid license, even if it's just for that plugin, just for cam. So I can't even use the official cam for the CNC, CNC machine anymore uh, if I'm then going to show you my experiences with it. And the other thing with the free plan is you have to agree uh, to Onshape sending you marketing emails. Yes, you can always opt out later, though I, I didn't really find the option to do that. Um, I, ju I just hate email marketing. Shh, bam. So of course, there is a super easy solution for all of this on Onshape. Uh, just get a paid plan, just, you know, buy an Onshape professional license. And that is just a cool $1,500 a year, which is crazy. I mean, of course, in the grand scheme of things, if you compare it to just buying a, a SolidWorks license or something, uh, it is still way cheaper, but that is, that is over a hundred bucks a month. That's just crazy. And of course, if we bring in the obvious competitor here, which is Fusion 360, uh, those plans start at 321 
euros, which is I think $399 or something, uh, or $349 per year. So that is a fraction of the cost that Onshape charges. And here's the best thing, uh, Fusion is actually really free. It is, it is totally free. You even get more features than that base level 321 euros a year subscription. You actually get more features than that. You get basically the professional plus or whatever package. So the conditions for that are you need to be a maker or a business with less than $100,000 of revenue a year. And well, I'm, I'm both, I guess. And honestly, if you're making more than $100,000 worth of revenue, you can shell out that license cost. I mean, honestly, for me, if it was between not having a CAD tool at all that is as good as something like Fusion or Onshape, etc., or paying those 320 euros a month, uh, I would actually go out and pay for that license because I think I'm getting good value out of it. I mean, I'm already paying for an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. That's what, 60 bucks a month? That is more than what you pay for Fusion. So I'm, I'm actually okay with that. So I had actually talked to an Onshape rep about this entire situation, where they wanna go, whether they're actually interested in supporting the maker or the startups that don't wanna shell out $1,500 a month for a license. Maybe they would introduce a license that is somewhere in the ballpark of you know, a Spotify or a Netflix or Amazon Prime or anything like those services that you just shell out that, you know, those 10, 15 bucks a month. And they were like, nope, nope, we're not doing it. We're not doing any of that we're actually introducing more expensive plans above the current top level plan. And they, they have done that. Kind of want to shoot the next scene outdoors, but it is just, ah, it's just way too hot to be out there. Air conditioning, so good these days. So the two reasons why I was sticking to Onshape for the past was, I thought the concept was great. I think they had a really slick product, something that was a new start more or less, and it kind of worked really well for me. It did everything I needed. Uh, plus the other one was Fusion 360, of course being the main competitor, uh, is made by Autodesk. And I've not made the best experiences with Autodesk products in the past. I don't know if you've ever used the uh, Autodesk Catch, which was their photogrammetry. You know, it took a bunch of, of photos of one object, you uploaded it, and then it created a 3D model from that. I don't know if you've ever used that, but that was a pile of garbage. When it worked, it was fantastic, but most of the time it didn't work. And Autodesk, you know, knew about the issue. Their forums were full of that exact issue that I was having, which was, you know, the upload just wouldn't complete. Uh, and they were like, yeah, well, we, we know it's a problem. That's cool. Also just various bits and bobs about other Autodesk stuff just wasn't as words on point as some other software I was using. But I'm willing to give Fusion 360 another shot, especially after actually using it for a cam, which is I think the, the biggest feature Fusion has going for it. So while I was out in the States and did that collab video with, uh, with Joel, 3D Printing Nerd, and we made those coasters, we used Fusion 360 to do cam for the Carvey, for that little tiny CNC mill he has. I mean, I wouldn't say it is like all super intuitive and, and super easy to get into, but then again, slices for 3D printing aren't exactly easy to get into either. Um, but it was just so powerful. It did so many things and I was like, Dude, this is real cam. This is a tool that you'd otherwise pay like upwards of 50,000 euros of licensing fees just for a single seat. So yeah, I actually want to do get more into CNCing and into subtractive manufacturing simply because it's, it's so powerful. You can cut aluminum or wood, both materials that aren't plastic, which is fantastic. And Fusion 360 for that is just, it's a great tool. Plus you have, you know, your, your CAD tools, your design tools. And I mean, I feel like at this point, pretty much any CAD package does pretty much everything you'd need it to do, uh, no matter who's making it, at least if it's like above a certain threshold. So it's more about the tools that that CAD package gives you versus uh, what you can achieve with it, because you can do pretty much anything with any CAD package. And you can actually look at what people are actually doing with Fusion 360, and it is, it does everything. I mean, there are still some quirks that I see right away in Fusion 360 that aren't perfect. Like the interface looks like garbage on a high resolution screen. It's just scaled up from whatever full HD or something, um, but I can live with that. And the other thing that you shouldn't underestimate is just how a company presents itself. So I believe Autodesk has actually sponsored some 3D printing YouTubers. I don't know who exactly it was uh, for some Fusion 360 projects. And that's just always a great move, I think, where they actually go out into the community and 
in and make themselves seen. Also, Autodesk was at the 3D printing meetup Sweden, which is like the smallest of events, and they're just there as I think even a sponsor as well. And then in contrast, when I asked Onshape about what they wanted to do, like if they wanted to sponsor a video or you know engage in some events with the community, they were just like, no, not doing it. Plus, I think the coolest thing about Autodesk is when we were at the after party of the Teradon event in Portland, I was there with the folks from Protopasta at the new Autodesk headquarters, and Alex from Protopasta just waltzed in and made himself an espresso on their $13,000 coffee maker. And Autodesk was mostly cool about it, so uh, props for that, I'll, I'll never forget that. So to sum things up, I will not be using Onshape anymore, I will be completely moving over to Fusion 360. If I had the choice, I would stick with Onshape, simply because migrating tools and learning a new tool is always challenging, but it's fun to learn new stuff. And of course, Fusion 360 does so much with CAM and with manufacturing uh, that I really want to get into more. So I will definitely be trying that out. I mean, everyone else is using Fusion 360, so I guess I'm just not gonna be the cool kid anymore, but hey, do whatever works. So here's what I would like to know from you guys. What CAD package are you using? Are you using FreeCAD, Onshape, Fusion, SolidWorks, Inventor? What's your tool of choice if you wanna create stuff that you didn't 3D print or mill out or produce in some other way? Or do you even use a CAD or do you just download stuff from the internet? Let me know in the comments below because I'm sure there's some CAD package that I've never heard of and that's probably gonna do a few things really well. Other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Ooh, slam my lens.